Hi guys, thanks for joining. Last month, the CWO released another software update for their Seastar Smart Telescopes, and the big news is that the S30 and S50 can now track objects in the night sky for 60 seconds using its EQ mode. I've tried this feature myself, so in this video I'll walk you through the setup, demonstrate it in action, and share the kinds of images I captured, as well as my thoughts about all this. I'm Wido Ulemans, and you are watching Wido's Astro Forum. Before jumping right in, let's take a quick step back and talk about smart telescopes in general. Think of them as the laptops of the telescope world. You get a telescope, a built-in camera, a tracking mount and a companion app all in one package. All you need to do is level your tripod, power up the smart telescope, install the Seastar app on your phone or tablet and connect over Wi-Fi and the smart telescope will handle the rest. In the app, you simply pick what you want to observe, whether that's the moon, a planet, or a deep sky object like a nebula, star cluster, or galaxy, and the smart telescope will automatically locate it in the night sky. As the telescope starts tracking the object, it captures and stacks the images, which boosts what astrophotographers know as the signal-to-noise ratio. This basically means that the longer the telescope tracks and stacks images of the object, the brighter and clearer the view becomes of that object on your smartphone or tablet. I've tested some of the most budget-friendly smart telescopes on my YouTube channel and have detailed reviews about them on my website. I even built a comparison tool and a best buy guide to help you choose the right kind of smart telescope that fits your needs and budget. If you're curious, you'll find all the info in the video description below. A fundamental rule in astrophotography is that the longer you expose, the better your image becomes. The longer you expose, the more photons you're able to collect, resulting in a clearer picture. Until about a year ago, most smart telescopes had a limit of about 10 second exposures because they tracked the night sky in alt azimuth mode. This simply means that the smart telescope can move up and down and left and right. LDS mode is particularly easy to use. You just need to level your tripod, mount the telescope on that tripod, and you're good to go. The downside is that it doesn't follow the natural arc of the night sky. Anyone who's made a night sky time lapse knows that the moon and the stars travel in a curve, not in straight lines. And that's why in LDS mode, these smart telescopes are limited to about 10 second exposures. To exactly mimic the arc of objects in the night sky, you need to set up your telescope in so-called equatorial mode, where you align your telescope with the north or south celestial pole so it can precisely track celestial objects along that night sky's curve. Companies like ZWO and Dwarf Lab were among the first to add equatorial tracking to their smart telescopes via software updates. I've got my personal thoughts about this, but first, let me show you the practical side of setting it up. I already showed you how to do this in a previous video, so if you already saw that one, feel free to skip ahead to the testing part of this video. Here's how to set it up. First, level your tripod and point one leg towards the north, at least when you are in the northern hemisphere like me. Second, attach the equatorial wedge to the tripod. If you're in the northern hemisphere, point the wedge towards the south. Yes, this might feel counterintuitive, but trust me. Use the bolts on your equatorial wedge to get it into the correct latitude position for your location. Third, place your sea star on the wedge with the power button facing up and the telescope pointing north. So the wedge must point south, so the sea star is facing north which is different from the usual polar alignment with a telescope. Fourth, switch to EQ mode in the Seastar app and tap the Get Polar Align Deviation button to guide you in pointing the telescope in the right direction. The Seastar will show you how far off you are from the celestial pole. Adjust the altitude and azimuth using the bolts on your wedge until the readings turn green, indicating that you are polar aligned. When you're close enough, 
a green check mark should appear, which tells you you are correctly aligned with the celestial pole. Once aligned, you are ready to use EQ mode and track objects much more accurately. All right, so I decided to use the C-Star S50 in EQ mode to check out the famous Pillars of Creation. You probably know this from the iconic Hubble photo back in the 90s, and of course, the James Webb Space Telescope had to replicate it with its own amazing picture. What's really quite incredible is that you can see the Pillars of Creation yourself live from your backyard or balcony with a budget smart telescope like the C-Star. I'll let you judge the image quality at the end of the video. By the way, lots of folks always ask what kind of tripod I use and what kind of wedge to put the C-Star in EQ mode. So I put some links to the tripod and the wedge in the video description. Anyway, I selected Meshe object number 16, the Eagle Nebula, in the C-Star app, where the pillars of creations are found at the heart of that nebula. And sure enough, the telescope slewed to that object, found it, started its calibration routine, and within a few minutes it was taking 60 second pictures. I let it run for about 15 minutes and checked the app. I got two surprises. First, it did stack four 60 second images, which was great, but after 15 minutes, I only got four minutes stacked. So I was missing out on 11 minutes of imaging time. After a decade of tinkering with telescopes, I'd like to think of myself as an experienced astrophotographer. But to be sure, I went back up, leveled my tripod again, and repeated the entire EQ mode routine to ensure I was properly aligned with the North Celestial Pole. Everything checked out and I decided to track the moon for a while. The sea star found the moon without issue, but I noticed that at 250 mm of focal length, the sea star S50 showed tiny but random tracking variations. After confirming that, I returned to M16 and decided to track the object for 10 minutes taking 60 second exposures again. This time I only got about 3 minutes stacked, so 3 frames. I should note that there wasn't much wind, only about 2 bow 4, which is basically calm. Next I did a 10 minute test using 30 second exposures. My odds improved. About half of the frames, 5 minutes in total, stacked in those 10 minutes. So my efficiency increased from 30% taking 60 second exposures to about 50% of imaging time taking 30 second exposures. The skies were perfectly clear and although no dew was forming, I turned on the dew heater anyhow just to be sure. I ran a third test at 20 second exposures and got 8 minutes and 30 seconds of imaging time out of 10 minutes. That's 85% of the potential imaging time actually captured. At this point it was 1.30 am and I wanted to get some sleep, so I let the Seastar S50 run at 20 second exposures for about 2.5 hours, from 2 am to 3.30 am. It's June here in the Netherlands and the sun never dips more than 16 degrees below the horizon this month, so we don't have dark nights in an astronomical sense, which requires the sun to go at least 18 degrees below the horizon. So I took the darkest hours of the month to capture M16. I used the plan mode in the C-Star app for this as it returns the S50 to its home position and retracts its arm at the end of the imaging session. When I woke up, I checked the app and I was happy to see that the S50 stored a stacked picture and the individual frames on the C-Star memory card. The M16 folder held 335 individual images, of which 294 were stacked automatically in the stacked image. So that's about 1 hour and 38 minutes of automatically stacked images, which is about 87% of the total imaging time. By the way, if you want to do some quick editing, the C-Star includes some basic denoise and editing tools for those who want to share a quick photo with family, friends or online. I also did a more elaborate approach where I separated the stars from the background and sharpened the nebula as best as I could using a software option called PixInsight, which is over $300 and this is the best picture I could make. Let me know what you think. So here's a quick recap. 
The 60 second feature did work for me, but I lost many frames due to imperfect tracking. I double checked my EQ alignment and I'm confident my polar alignment was nearly spot on. That brings me to a broader point. Telescopes like the ZWO Star S50 are fantastic for casual observing at an affordable price. For around $500, that is, depending on tariffs and import taxes, you can glimpse parts of the universe that are invisible to the naked eye. In LDS mode, you can shoot up to 10 second exposures without worrying about EQ alignment. Now, of course, there are experienced astrophotographers, myself included, who aim to squeeze every photon out of these budget smart telescopes. Naturally, we get somewhat frustrated when a session doesn't go perfectly like the fact that I ended up with 20 instead of 60 second exposures on M16. But let's take a step back here. Smart telescopes such as the S30 and S50 are clearly designed for users who aren't focused on capturing the absolute best deep sky images. Don't get me wrong, you're welcome to push that little C-Star S50 to its limits, and I know many of you do but it's important to remember what these affordable smart telescopes are all about. Enjoying the night sky and revealing details beyond what the naked eye can see, all at a budget-friendly price and without a steep learning curve. Devices like the Seastar S30, S50 and Dwarf Labs Dwarf 3 are very portable, easy to use and perfect for anyone who wants to explore the heavens without diving into deep sky astrophotography. Isn't it great that people can catch a glimpse of the pillars of creation from their own balcony or backyard without breaking the bank? So, that's my take. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment below. And as always, I wish you clear skies.